Welcome back to Pokemon Brilliant Diamond. Last episode, we became the new champion of Sinnoh as we took down Cynthia, and now we're back where it all began right here in Twinleaf Town. Man, our Nintendo Switch must be dusty with how long it's been since we last played it. But today, we're going to begin the post game by having a little chat with Mom. Butt came looking for you. Oh, our favorite. I can't wait to see Butt again. I don't know what it was about, but he was shouting about you needing to get on a ship at Snowpoint City? You know how impatient he is. He was gone before I could ask. Anyway, how's it going, kid? Is your project with the professor coming along? That's a good question. I haven't checked my Pokedex at all, but we really do got to get that filled up. So that's going to be our goal is to complete the Pokedex for the professor. So let's check up on it. As you can see, we've got 146 Pokemon seen and only 56 of them caught. Thankfully, we don't need to catch every Pokemon to get the national decks. You only need to have seen the 151 native to Sinnoh and what the heck? I'm missing Wormadom. There's really a trainer with Wormadom out there I forgot to battle? It's a good thing Google exists so I can just look up where that missing Wormadom could be or what trainer has it. But as long as you battled most of the trainers in the region, you should really only be missing Mesprit, Azulf, and Yuxi, as well as the cover legendary from the game that you didn't play. So for me, Palkia is of course missing from Shining Pearl, but thankfully there is a way to get it in your Pokedex without having to trade it. So that's going to be our first mission of the post game, filling up the Sinnoh decks. And if you guys are excited, make sure to smash that like button down below and off to the professor we go then. Of course, we could fly there, but I want to hear that glorious music again and feel the nostalgia of... Okay, that's definitely not what I was feeling nostalgic about. Please tell me we can get through noise. <laughs> no wild Pokemon in that patch of grass. And hello, Dawn. How's it been? You're friends with the Elder of Celestic Town, aren't you? She told me that she had something she wanted to show you. Oh, really? So that's going to be how you get the other version legendary, and we're going to do that a little later, but... First, we must go talk to the Professor. You've come to show me your progress. Yes, yes. Huh. So you've seen 146. You're not far from seeing every Pokemon there is to see in Sinnoh. Wait, that's it? Are you kidding me? I thought he was like going to tell us about the Lake Guardians and the other ones that were missing. I mean, I guess we kind of know what we're supposed to do ourselves anyway. So uh, let's head all the way back to Lake Verity for our first Lake Guardian at least. And fortunately, we don't need to catch it right now. You can get it registered in the decks by simply visiting its cave, back where it all began. As for the other two, we're going to have to actually catch them, which might be annoying. Hopefully, we can just get them in quick balls. That would be ideal. Probably not going to happen, but a boy can dream. Now, here in Verity Cavern, not only do we have that awesome music back, but also this little guy. Long time no see. Kiaoon! And he's gone. Great. There's the professor! That was Mesprit, wasn't it? You've accomplished what I asked you to do at Kanalave Library. I asked you to get data on the Pokemon of the lake, and you did! But it didn't prove any answers about the mysteries of evolution. I still don't know why some Pokemon evolve and others don't. Ultimately, it only deepened the mystery. That sounds like a personal problem, bro. Having mysteries to solve adds to my enjoyment. So you're a fan of Scooby-Doo, I take it? Why don't you chase after Mesprit? To me, it seemed as if it wanted to play with you. If you were to use the Magikarp marking, I mean, why, why did I read that as Magikarp? You'd be able to track the movements of Pokemon. What? You don't have the marking map. You should occasionally pay visits to the Pokech Company, you know? Go on, Orange. I'm sure that you'll keep meeting countless Pokemon and people. Those encounters will keep thrilling you in their own special ways. I hope you'll enjoy that experience. Take care, Orange. You take care, Professor. I know that hip's been acting up recently, bro. Wife told me all about it. Does Professor Rowan even have a wife? I don't think that's, like, confirmed or anything, but, like, a man of his age, I feel like he's probably got a couple kids spread about the region. Anyway, uh, he did tell us to actually go visit the Poketch building right here in Jubilife City. And we could have done this a long time ago. Actually, after every certain couple of gym badges, 
if you come visit the Poketch Company president right in this building, hello! Your patience is rewarded! I've developed a new app! And we're gonna get the memo pad! Not exactly what we were hoping for. So uh, let's just keep talking to him. Hi hi! Yes, we get it bro. I've developed a new app! The marking map! There it is! That is what we need in order to track down Mesprit. But I should say that uh, you don't actually need to hunt down Mesprit in order to get it in the Pokedex. Uh, that little encounter we had with it actually already counted. So if we check it out, you'll see 147 is already filled in. So now we're missing... What? I thought Mesprit was first. I guess maybe Uxie and then Azel. And those we actually are going to have to fight and catch or defeat in order to register. But uh, let's see, does he have any more apps? No, okay, that's it. Well, as you'll see on the marking map, there is a little guy right here by Sunny Shore City. Or is that next to Pastoria, actually? Anyway, that's actually gonna be Mesprit. So, at least back in the original games, I remember the best way to get it was just to kind of flip between two different routes because I think every time you leave an area, yeah, Mesprit will change locations. So, if we just keep going, back and forth between Jubilife and Route 204, we might just happen to get it to come over here or... Oh, there we go. It's getting a little bit closer. Come on, Mesprit. If we go fast enough, it just like completely stops the music. That's kind of funny. Oh man, it got close for a little bit and then it totally just went away. What the heck? Oh, Mesprit. <gasps> Yo, it's like right there, bro. All right, Mesprit, I'm gonna need you to stay right there okay i know he's gonna move but uh bro he's literally in the route right above oh my gosh this mesprit is trolling me now all right back to sand gem town and <gasps> yo it's here no way now we should just be able to look around in the grass and that's that special music mesprit will appear and as you might know if you see your trainer in the opening cutscene there, it means that the Pokemon has at least two maxed out IVs, which I believe should be the case with any legendary. Like they'll always have at least three max IVs or maybe two. Anyway, I'm going for the quick ball, dude. Oh man. Well, now it gets a little more. What the heck? Dude just ran away? I guess the only way to catch it is with a quick ball then. <laughs> Good thing we don't actually need a catch Mesprit in order to register it in the decks. As you saw, just from seeing it in the cave, we're good to go. So we're going to move on to the next Lake Guardian, Azul, who resides at Lake Valor. But there's something I want to get around this hotel here first. Apparently in this house right here is where we get the only other Pokechop that we're missing that you don't get in the post game because there are some you can only get in Ramanas Park, which we will check out in a later episode. But uh, let's head inside here and talk to this rich boy. The reservations were filled, but they managed to get us in here. We're finally alone, the two of us. You mean three of us, right? What, you don't got room for three? Oh, coin toss. Great. What the heck is this app all about? <laughs> it's literally just a coin toss. All right, let's play heads or tails. If I get it right, you have to hit like, and I'm gonna say heads. Oh my god, I suck. Apparently the trainer with the Wormadom is also nearby at Route 214. I feel like I battled everybody here though. Is it this beauty? Oh my god, how did I never battle you? What the heck? I've walked by this area a million times and never realized that I guess I skipped this beauty and she's the only trainer in the whole world with a Wormadom? Like, okay. The actual hardest battle in the game. <laughs> Beauty Devon and her Wormadom. So if you're missing any other Pokemon aside from the legendaries, again, Google is your best friend. Just look up its Pokedex number if you don't know what it is, and you should be able to find some kind of thread on which trainer has it. Like, I just typed in what trainer has Wormadom in Pokemon Diamond. And it said Beauty Devon on Route 214. So now that we're here in front of Lake Valor, I realize we have a bit of a problem. First, I don't have any repels. Second, I don't have a very good Pokemon for catching other Pokemon. Ideally, you want something with Thunder Wave or Hypnosis. And I know that Zip learns it, but at level 48. So we could 
use a couple of rare candies on it, get ourselves a Thunder Wave. Uh, Travolta can also learn it, but I would need a Heart Scale, and I don't have any of those right now, so uh, definitely recommend having some sort of Pokemon with either Thunder Wave or Hypnosis in order to paralyze or put the Pokemon to sleep. So I think I'm actually going to add this little Bronzor onto the team, even if it is level 25, like... Actually, Yuxi and Azul are both Psychic types, so they're not really going to be able to do much damage to Little Dong. <laughs> little Dong. <laughs> Let's do it! 10 rare candies right into our Luxray. Boom! 53,000 experience! Oh god, I'm regretting this already. <laughs> it is pretty satisfying seeing all those levels go up. And I have no idea why Luxray learns Thunder Wave this late, and apparently also Scary Face, but there it is. The Thunder Wave, that will be a great help in catching all of these annoying Pokemon that try to run away. And I guess I'll get rid of the charge for it. We do also have Bite, so that'll definitely help with catching these guys since they are Psychic type. That'll be super effective, but probably not do enough damage to like one-shot them. And I don't know if I sprayed a Repel still, I probably didn't, didn't I? Oh wait, I think I did actually. Nice. Okay, so we're ready then. Bonsai, hurry along. I realize how much of a contradiction that is. Yeah, he's just gonna teleport straight to our face as we step into Valor Lake. Or Lake Valor, same difference. Now you guys might remember this place was actually blown up by Team Galactic last time we were here, so we couldn't fully explore it. And there is a TM that I believe we can now get all the way across here, we've got a little patch of grass as well as TM25 for Thunder! Thunder! Na 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 Thunder! Na 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 Okay, uh, I think there's actually a hidden item as well. Over here, perhaps? This seems like there would be something. But as always, there probably isn't. Of course. Onwards then, to the lake! Please, no wild Pokémon! Thank goodness. That was a really short little trip up here, so... <laughs> would've been quite unfortunate if we did run into something. But, here in Valor Cave, we're gonna find ourselves Azul. And I definitely recommend saving beforehand, because if you accidentally knock out these Pokémon, you're gonna have to beat the Pokémon League all over again, in order to get them to reappear. And I don't feel like doing that, but I mean, I guess we could technically if we want to later on reset for a better nature or even potentially a shiny. And we are going to take on the Pokemon League again eventually when I do the rematches, so maybe I will consider actually taking down this Azulf instead of catching it right now. But then again, I did just waste 10 rare candies on Luxray, so never mind. Kyun! <laughs> We're going to catch you, little dude. Never know, the quick ball might just work out this time around, as Azul has appeared. And this is actually my favorite of the three late guardians. I just remember using it so much in Gen 4 Wi-Fi battles. This thing was an excellent lead, which is basically your first Pokemon that you send out from your party. It had access to Stealth Rock, U-Turn, I believe Taunt, and a couple of other moves that were pretty dang good <laughs> as a lead Pokemon. Oh, it's going for the Imprison. Which means that, uh, never mind, I thought that was Block for some reason. I'm like, yo, we could actually use that against Mesprit, since apparently it runs away as soon as you toss a Pokeball its way. So you're gonna need a Pokemon with either Block or some kind of move that traps the opponent, like Bind or maybe Fire Spin. I mean, there's definitely some other move you could use, and I did not mean to go for the Volt Switch. Oh god, that's probably gonna kill it, isn't it? This is not great, come on! Ooh, just barely leaving it at the red HP there. Okay, never mind, this is perfect, because we can now go out into the Dong at level 25. Let's see how long it can survive. <laughs> I'm just trying to go for that hypnosis, you already know, dude. And Azul just keeps going for Imprison, so, I mean, I guess Dong is going to survive quite a while then. But can we hit the hypnosis? That's a whole other question. Oh god, here it is, and... Okay, even though that's four times resisted, we still take quite a lot of damage, but it's to be expected at level 25. We do hit the Hypnosis though, which is what really matters. And now that we've got Asleep and at red HP, it's time for some Dust Balls. I highly recommend Dust Balls for all of these late Guardians because they work best at night or in caves. And obviously, we're in a cave right now. Not that it's going to work out at all. It didn't even shake. So, uh... 
I don't know if maybe this doesn't technically count as a... I'm pretty sure it has to count as a cave. So, like, we probably just got unlucky with the first ball there. But it's looking like this one's gonna be just a lot luckier than the first. As is caught on the third try. Hell yeah, that's what I like to see. Three level ups for Dong, too. That dude might just evolve. I don't even know what level you get Bronzong, actually. But, uh, do get extra sensory. Not that we're actually going to use Bronzong on the team for all that long, but uh, might as well grab it. And those extra levels will be appreciated when we go take down Yuxi, or take on, rather. For now, though, we've got Azul registered in the decks as the being of willpower is known to sleep at the bottom of the lake to keep the world in balance. <laughs> what is it, like the Avatar of Pokemon? You know what? Just for that, I'm going to name you Aang, dog, and you're going straight to the box. Now we're off to catch the final triplet, although technically we never caught Mesprit. But as I was saying, actually, I think there are, you know what? People keep telling me that you can actually fly from the town map, so I don't need to deal with the annoyance of scrolling all the way through the Poketch. Thank you again for all those quick tips. I don't know why there's like the simplest things about this game that I don't even think about. But yeah, we're gonna head to Snow Point and you know what? We might as well heal up first. As I was saying though, there are a couple of moves that you can use in order to trap a Pokemon in battle, which will come in very handy when we go try to catch Mesprit again. Block is the one I can mostly think of, but Mean Look is another good option, just not as many Pokemon learn it. I think maybe Gengar and Golbat, but like who uses a Golbat, you know? And funnily enough, Bronzong actually learns Block upon evolving. If only we had a little bit more experience on our Dong, we wouldn't have had to waste those rare candies on Luxray. In fact, I didn't even need to wear waste the rare candies at all because we ended up using Hypnosis with Dong anyway, so <laughs> feels bad for my rare candies. But uh, here at Lake Acuity, we will find Yuxi. And once again, I'm gonna save the game just in case we knock it out somehow as we encounter Kiyoyun. A little bit different there. You can't mistake those cries of the pixies. But yeah, I do feel pretty stupid about using those rare candies. <laughs> Alright, you know what? Let's just prove that it wasn't a waste by using Thunder Wave, at least on this big brain dude right here. Yuxi! Gotta remember first though, to use that Quick Ball. It has a 4 times catch rate on the first turn, so always gotta try to at least go for it. Might not always work out, but sometimes, come on dude! Got me all hyped up for nothing! And you're also just gonna use in prison? I mean, I guess that's... I'm alright with that. So, let's go for the bite. And, uh, eventually Thunder Wave. Even though I believe Hypnosis actually gives you a higher chance of catching than Thunder Wave does, so... Definitely the better option, but what? Yuxi is so much tankier than Azolf, what the heck? I didn't realize they all have different stats. It makes sense though, because it wasn't like Yuxi was as common of a lead as Azolf. Just so I don't feel so bad about using up all my rare candies, or almost all of them. We're gonna go for the Thunder Wave. We gotta inhibit the beautiful mind of Yuxi. And even though this means it's gonna be a little bit tougher to catch than Azolf was, because that's not a good sign, breaks out on the first Pokeball. Well, then again, Azolf did the same thing, so who knows how long we're going to be ending up here for. Could always just do a little bit of editing magic. I'll try to keep count though of exactly how many Pokeballs we end up throwing, if it's a lot. I mean, who knows, maybe this next one will be it. Definitely not edited or anything. Well, I totally lost count, but I guess we can check our Dusk Balls afterward. Either way, we got Yuxi, and it actually didn't take nearly as long as I was expecting. Zip at 49, Dong at 29, and Yuxi at 69. No, it's it's at level 50. Sorry. Uh, this is the being of knowledge. It is said that it can wipe out the memory of those who see its eyes. Oh god, I didn't even realize. It's always got its eyes closed. That's kind of terrifying. <laughs> it's like that flash from the men in black. I had to look it up because I don't remember what it was called, but apparently it was the Neuralizer, which if you've ever seen the Men in Black movies is basically that little flash that wipes out your mind. So that will be Yuxi's name. Very appropriate. 
considering that Pokedex entry there. Never knew that. Little fun fact for today. Yuxi can just wipe your memory. And it's looking a little darker here on Lake Acuity, or is that just me? Oh yeah, hit that little stretch trainer. We've done quite a lot of work already, but again, I was about to use the Poketch. You can just go to the town map because we've got one last stop before we can fill up that Sinnoh Dex over in Celestic Town. You might remember Dawn mentioned that we should go visit Cynthia's grandma, and her house is actually all the way up here at the north of the town. But before we head inside, let's check out the Pokedex, and you will see we've got 150 total Pokemon seen. I think earlier I said you have to see 151. Technically, you don't need Manaphy since it is a event exclusive Pokemon through Mystery Gift. So you only need the 150 with the last one being Dialga or Palkia depending on which version you're playing. So here in Brilliant Diamond, we're gonna need to register ourselves a Palkia and you can do that in Grandma's house. Long time no see, remember to pay your elders a visit. I did some research of my own since that spot of trouble last time. Mount Coronet acting up had me very... <laughs> I don't know why I just think of that dude saying, you gonna make me act up. You gonna make grandma act up by giving us a book. Oh, I hate reading. Oh, thank goodness. It's a picture book. <laughs> it reads Palkia, the Pokemon that binds the spatial dimensions. It seems there were two Pokemon in ancient Sinnoh. They respectively stood as symbols of time and space. Great. So that will actually count as our final Pokedex entry. And I guess if you talk to her, she'll show you the picture again in case you didn't register it the first time. Okay, we got it in our mind. No Yuxi anymore to wipe that out. So if we check the Pokedex, you will now see 151 Pokemon scene or 150 if you don't have Manaphy. But yeah, if you have internet, there's no reason not to get yourself a Manaphy. Just go here into Mystery Gift and you should be able to grab it. But now that we've got that, it's time to head back to Professor Rowan and show him our progress. So back in Sanjum Town, you'll see the little flag to complete our Pokedex and turn in our report. So off we go, Star Raptor! Fly, you fool! Been a while since I said that one. I think that was like kind of my catchphrase in Sun and Moon with the ride Pokemon, or at least Charizard that would fly us everywhere. So now that honor goes to Star Raptor. Yes, I've come to show you my big old Dex. 151 Pokemon, just like the original Kanto. Bravo! You've recorded all the Pokemon of Sinnoh. This will help immeasurably with my studies on evolution. Ooh, who could this be? Oak, my boy. I mean, my man. No, wait, that sounds weird too. <laughs> what was that thing he always said in Pokemon Snap? Welcome back. It's been a long time, Professor Rowan. I'll tell you, Sinnoh certainly is a long trip from Kanto. Of course, if it means meeting new Pokemon, there's no distance too great for the likes of us to travel. Oh, if it isn't my old colleague, Professor Oak. I should have expected as much from the world's authority on Pokemon. We always used to joke, where there are Pokemon, you'll find Doak. These freaking boomers and their dad jokes. This is like grandpa jokes at this point. Good to see that hasn't changed one bit. I don't like the way you're looking at me, Rowan. Professor Oak, let me introduce you to my young assistant. This youngster has filled every page of the Sinnoh Dex for me. Ah, well, very glad to meet you. As you've heard, my name is Oak. I've been hearing a great deal about you from Professor Rowan lately. He's been exuberant in praise about a fantastic young trainer. I see that you live up to... No, that you surpassed his praise. You've also got an impeccable sense of timing. You see, I had an errand to run for Professor Rowan on my visit here. He'd asked me to bring the data for the National Dex. So since you're here, let me upgrade your Pokedex with the National Mode. After all, there are many kinds of Pokemon in this world. What a coincidence. You're telling me if Professor Oak didn't just happen to drop by, we wouldn't have even gotten the National Dex? Come on, Rowan, what the heck? I'm afraid it won't be easy to complete that National Dex. However, I'm sure you'll make an honest attempt. Nah. Have no fear, Orange will get the job done. By the way, what compelled you to visit this region? Ah yes, I've heard that Ramanus Park is now open. If I remember correctly, it's at the end of Route 221. Ramanus Park has a special system that attracts every imaginable kind of Pokemon from every region. I've come to make certain that system is operating properly. You should make an effort to visit Ramanus Park too, Orange. Whoops, I'll be late for my meeting if I don't get going. 
Okay, pleasure seeing both of you. Bye-bye now. No, please, Oak, don't go. Don't leave me alone here with this weirdo. Off he goes, busy as ever. Now, I have a gift here as a reward for completing the Sinnoh decks. And we're going to get the Poke Radar. Kind of forgot about this, but yeah, probably even better than the national decks. The Poke Radar or Pokemon Radar. Use it. Indicate grass patches where Pokemon are lurking. I prepared that to help my field assistants put together the Sinnoh decks, but you took care of that. I'm sure it'll be useful or your goal in filling the national decks. So yes, with this Poke Radar, we can now shiny hunt, or at least the most popular and easiest method for shiny hunting in this game. And we actually get one more thing. Not this, what the heck? Rourke, you can't just be jump scaring us like that, bro. Been a while indeed. When I heard you defeated the Elite Four and entered the Hall of Fame, I rushed straight here to congratulate you. I mean it, great job, man. All the other gym leaders are really happy for you too. And I'ma let you finish, but we gym leaders aren't gonna take this lying down. Losing to you was rough on all of us, yet we still have our pride as Sinnoh's eight gym leaders. Now we're all determined to beat your ass. <laughs> so if you don't mind, could you give us all another chance? We'll each be waiting at our own gym. You know where to find me, or Berg. Hell yeah, we got gym leader rematches. You see me with the platinum outfit, and if you've been keeping up with all of my diamond and pearl hype videos, you know how badly I wanted the gym leader rematches from platinum to be a thing. And they are, dude. They actually put gym leader rematches maybe even harder than platinum. So I'm going to be saving those gym leader rematches for later on after we've done all the other optional stuff in the post game. And speaking of, there's actually one thing we can do right now. If we talk to Don, have you ever chatted with my kid's sister? Why, no, we haven't. And it just so happens that Dawn's house is right over here. And if we head inside to visit her little sister, and also her grandpa apparently. Oh Ma, you've got a national dex? How fantastic! Rowan should be delighted. It'll greatly help his research. But young trainer, know this. In the world, there are three, no, 400. No, 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 there are a lot more Pokemon than that. <laughs> yeah, it's all the way up to almost 900 now, I think. Grandpa can't even count that high. Oh, hi! There was news on TV saying there's a massive outbreak of Pokemon. That'd be great for filling up your Pokedex. Okay, so you're just not even gonna tell me what you saw though? Oh, okay. Route 207! They said there's a whole bunch of Fampy there! You have to hurry! I want you to do better than my sister Dawn! Uh, okay, that's a little weird, I mean... It ain't no competition, but then again... Fampy sound pretty dang cool, so... Off! To Route 207 we go, but I'm interested if it actually does say it on the TV. Of course not. It's a commercial for Snowpoint? Okay. Well, you can actually come to Dawn's sister every single day and she will give you different Pokemon. In fact, if you just open up your menu, you'll see a lot of Fampy on Route 207. And every day there will be a different Pokemon Swarm and a different route, so let's see if I can even remember where 207 was. I mean, it's gotta be around here somewhere that's 211 and 207 that's a very small route from what i remember it's just that little patch of grass to the north of orberg well we did just talk to rourke so it's kind of a coincidence that we happen to come back here but as you will soon see when we head to that route and check out the grass there's little fampies popping out in the grass it's so cool dude i love it and this is actually a good chance to show off the pokey radar as well so let's hit up our bag and the key items, you will see Poker Radar. I definitely recommend registering this. I guess I'll override a uh, fishing rod. I don't really use a fishing rod all that often. And the Versus Seeker can be pretty helpful for rematching trainers. So uh, you can actually run into these fan pee just, what the heck? I didn't even realize that I had run into something, but uh, there it is, the wild fan pee. It's not quite like Pokemon Let's Go where actually running into the character model will make you encounter it. Instead, it's just randomly in the grass itself. Like you just encounter it like a regular Pokemon. So don't think that just because you're like walking into the literally Fampy, like it's little Sprite and you're not encountering it. There's nothing wrong with your game. It's just actually in the grass. So if you have a repel up or something on accident and you're not running into it, that's why. So either way, we caught Fampy, the long nose Pokemon. Gonna be our first national dex entry or well, technically we caught quite a lot of Pokemon that weren't in the Sinnoh decks in the Grand Underground, but 
this is gonna be our first post-game Pokemon. As I was saying though, uh, if you actually run into the Fampi, yeah, they kind of run away. So you just gotta keep running around in the grass and it's not like guaranteed either. As you'll see here, we got a Geodude, but I've just realized we didn't even use the Poke Radar yet. So now let's do that and it'll play some nice jingly music and some patches of grass will start shaking. You want to try to aim for one that is at least four steps away. It's kind of hard to explain, especially with Torterra getting in our way. But basically, you want to run into the same Pokemon over and over again. And if you guys really want me to, I will make a video explaining exactly how to poke a radar chain, which is like the best shiny hunting method, or at least the easiest, in my opinion, for these games. Because after catching the same Pokemon, 40 times in a row without breaking your chain, the odds of finding a shiny of it are like 1 in 100, which is like pretty freaking low. So I'm not going to explain shiny hunting in full detail right now. If you want, I'll link a guide in the description. But if you guys really want me to do one myself, I could in the future. Uh, but another thing that the Poke Radar is useful for is actually finding rare Pokemon that you wouldn't normally find in Sinnoh. And every single route has a different rare Pokemon you can get. Apparently here in route whatever we're at, it's Larvitar. What a coincidence. Because I've actually been wanting to catch myself a Larvitar since even before the post game. But you can't get it until now. So quick ball away and hopefully you can catch it first try here. Even though, as you might have noticed, it is a very low level. So might actually be a better idea to catch one of these in the Grand Underground. At least I think we can also find them there. And I also believe Tyranitar are version exclusive, so you can only get these in Brilliant Diamond. The rock skin Pokemon eats soil. Once it has eaten a large mountain, it goes to sleep so it can grow. Larvitar just be eating mountains out here? What the heck? <laughs> I actually never knew that about it. But uh, as I mentioned, if you catch the Pokemon, the chain should continue and you'll know because of the little music going on as well as the shaking patches of grass. So if you walk to one that is at least four steps away, you should be able to find the same Pokemon over and over again. The key thing is to count that the shaking grass is four steps away, like I said. And it's a little tricky, so I might show a graphic on screen of exactly what I mean. But other than shiny Pokemon, this is also a good way to get Pokemon with their hidden abilities and sometimes even maxed out IVs or basically better stats than usual. So I'm going to try to continue catching Larvitars here and see if we can get a special shaking patch of grass to pop up that should contain a Pokemon with their hidden ability. Well, this is an interesting glitch I've just found. I guess after using the Poke Radar, sometimes it just creates invisible walls in the grass. 10 out of 10. <laughs> Yo, I thought they didn't exist, but finally, there it is. You can clearly see that the grass is way more violent than the regular grass patches. So thankfully, it happens to be four steps away. You can count him right there and step right in to find, hopefully, a hidden ability, Larvitar. Which I thought was Sandstream, but I think it's actually Sand Bale instead, so we're not gonna be able to see it throw up the Sandstorm right now. In fact, we're not gonna know if it has its hidden ability until we catch it. So let's check out Larvitar summary, and you will see the Sand Bale ability, which is indeed Larvitar's hidden ability. So yes, you can definitely get hidden abilities through the Poke Radar. That might be the easiest way, if not in the underground. And that still counted for my chain, so I really can still try to go for that shiny. But holy moly, how many Larvitars have I caught already? Dude, I'm at 30 Larvitars. I just gotta catch 10 more and I could maybe get a shiny. Do we try to go for it right now? That is the question. One, two, three, four, boom. It would make for a pretty epic video. We actually somehow got it. What? Wait, what happened? My chain just randomly ended. Are you kidding me? After 31 Larvitars, my chain has just decided to end. Well, that was a huge waste of time. Let's go check out the underground because now that we've got the national decks, I believe some more rare Pokemon should be showing up here. And yo, the Diglett bonus is actually happening. And the cave that we need happens to be right over there. So who knows, we might just still run into a shiny. I really wish you could see shinies in the overworld down here. What the heck? 
Apparently, I didn't get an item, and okay, that's an interesting hitbox for it. Is that a new Pokemon? Actually, I don't think we could have found Furret down here before now. And I get oh, a rare candy, huh? Among those new Pokemon you can find are the starters from Kanto, Johto, Hoenn, and Sinnoh. Even the other starters that you didn't pick at the beginning of your adventure. You can literally get every single starter Pokemon from Gen 1 to 4. And specifically, grass and water starter Pokemon can be found in these types of biomes, which you'll see like half blue and half green on the minimap. Just gotta keep running in and out until you find one. Oh, there's also a Kecleon, which I know is a rare Pokemon we're gonna need to get a specific Pokechap. That reminds me, I never mentioned, but there's actually a Pokechap that helps you keep track of how many, what your chain is on the Poke Radar. That and a couple of other Poke Chaps we're missing you can get in Ramanas Park, which is probably what we're going to be doing in the next episode. But while we've got it here, we might as well catch this Kecleon because I believe for it, you're going to get the color change Poke Chap. So you can literally change the color of the background of your Poke Chap. You know, the default is that hideous green, but with the Kecleon by your side, you can make that any color you want, as it is, of course, the color swap Pokemon. And I'm really surprised that uh, the... Diglett bonus hasn't run out yet. Or maybe it did and oh, never mind. Yeah, it's still 40 out of 40. So let's quickly run out or not. You know who's even better than a starter is Ekans because apparently it has a hilarious animation in the overworld. So I'm gonna try to catch it. Yo, there we go. We got little Bulbasaur. How fitting that we get the very first Pokemon in the whole national decks. Bulbasaur has appeared! And like I said, you can also find water starters in this biome specifically, or you can go to like just the green or just the blue if you want, specifically grass or water types, but we got the most fitting of them all. Literally the very first Pokemon, or at least the first one in the decks. I don't think it was the first one created. That honor, I believe, goes to Rhyhorn. Oh no, it's using double edge. Please don't kill yourself with recoil, please. <gasps> that is way too close, dude. Hey, at least the grassy terrain is still going, so it counteracts a little bit of that double edge damage. But now I'm really scared, man. I'm gonna just keep tossing dust balls and hope for the best. I don't know if the starters have like a higher catch rate than usual. They might just, but uh, hey, there we go. We no longer have to sweat or worry about nothing. Got the Bulbasaur, and no level up on Dong. The Seed Pokemon. For some time after its birth, it grows by taking nourishment from the seed on its back. Very interesting. Don't you love a little Pokedex fun fact? Well, I couldn't quite find any more starters, but we did get Dong to level 33, which means he is going to be evolving and finally fulfilling the prophecy of his own namesake. The large dong is now a bronzong. Wait, what the frick? Why is the name in Chinese? I'm pretty sure this thing isn't traded, right? Or is it because it, I named it dong? Maybe it's like censored or something? I am so confused. <laughs> but more importantly, we gotta teach him block because that will allow us to prevent Mesprit from escaping. So goodbye, Confuse Ray. Let's grab that block. Before I forget, we gotta get Snake to walk alongside us and check out that amazingly animated- <laughs> I can't, dude. I can't. What is happening? Why did they do Ekans so dirty? They straight up just forgot to animate it. Like, that's not a joke, right? <laughs> anyway, uh, in between Route 205 and the Valley Windworks is gonna be the best place to get Mesprit. So like I showed you guys earlier, every time you move between two routes, Mesprit will change location. And because both of these routes have grass in them, it means that you have a higher chance of Mesprit coming into either one of them as you step over. And of course, it goes into the wrong one, and now it's gone away entirely. Okay, so we're just going to keep rinse and repeating until hopefully Mesprit goes into one of these two routes. It might take a while, but it's just a matter of time before the stars align and Mesprit is on the route that we're on. Oh yes, finally we got Mesprit in the correct route. So let's make sure that Bronzong is leading the team. We just gotta go for block and hopefully it doesn't run away. I think on the first turn, 
you're guaranteed to at least hit Mesprit once. And I've actually learned that if you do damage to it, and then it runs away, it'll actually keep that damage the next time you run into it. So, I think we should be able to get the block off, and... Boom! You're cancelled, homie! And can no longer escape! It's trying to run away, but it just can't. So now, we're gonna hit it with that Hypnosis, put it right to sleep, and hopefully catch this thing. Oh, yes, we got it to sleep! Does that mean now we can actually switch and maybe false swipe it? I'm kind of scared that if I switch to Garchomp because Bronzong was the one that used block, it's gonna run away. But, uh, you know, I guess we're testing right now. It has not run away just yet, so let's go for a false swipe. But I'm still worried that if it wakes up... What the heck? That did no damage. No! It fled! You gotta be kidding me! Maybe we really did need to keep Bronzong in. 2,000 years later. Oh, yes, we got it! Alright, no messing around this time. We're going straight for that block hypnosis again. You're getting cancelled tonight, Mesprit. No matter what it takes. So, first step, gotta go for that block. It is indeed still asleep, confirming that any damage and status ailments that you put on it will still remain the next time you see it. So, this is it. This is our best shot right here. It's asleep. You know what? I'm gonna hit this dude with a heavy slam. Hopefully it doesn't end up killing it, that would be really unfortunate, but it uh, doesn't even get close to knocking it out actually. And somehow you're still asleep, you know, I'll take that. The only thing I wish was that it was nighttime right now so that we could have a higher chance of getting it with a dusk ball too, but don't think we can cheat and change the time on the switch, so uh... Go back to sleep you little beach. I <laughs> am so tired of this dude, I just want to get Vesper already. But, uh, I don't know, it's kind of low health, and, uh, we do still have... Oh, thank goodness, I thought I didn't have any Ultra Balls, but we do got some. That should at least have a slightly higher catch rate than those... N never mind. Does Block just last for the whole battle, or what? Because somehow it has not ran away yet. And I'm gonna go for another Hypnosis then, as it tries to Psychic. Oh, little does it know that Dong is just an impenetrable wall now. Well, maybe not with the special defense drops, but we just don't miss with the Hypnosis. At Red Hell, put to sleep, can't run away because of the block. Like, this is it. We have no better chance of catching this little thing. So, go Ultra Ball and please tell me that this is it. <gasps> yes! Oh my god, no way! <laughs> that was no editing either. Like, I actually did cut with uh, Yuxi earlier, but that time... There was no editing magic. We actually just caught the Mesprit after all of that whole ordeal. Oh man. The Emotion Pokemon taught humans the nobility of sorrow, pain, and joy. It's not all bad emotions with Mesprit, but sorrow and pain, like, jeez. <laughs> it's a little crying face, just because uh, that's how I feel right now after how long it took to catch Mesprit. Come along, Snek. We've done it! Neuralizer, the Uxie, Crying Face, the Mesprit, and Aang, the Azulf, have been caught. And we got ourselves the National Dex. I would say that's a pretty good start to our post-game adventure. So next time, we're going to be heading off to Ramanas Park, where we can get a whole bunch more legendary Pokemon and a few more Poke Chaps. Or we could go to the Battle Zone. I'm kind of undecided. Maybe you guys can let me know what you want to see in the comments. But remember to smash that like button if you enjoyed, and stay tuned for the next episode coming up, and I'll catch you then.